Okay, so, hi everyone, hello. Um, what I wanted to do is kind of like explain James's case because I know a lot of people noticed that I said he went to the vet on Monday and then I never updated. Um, the reason for that is I, it's been like, you can back me up, it's been a really hard week here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's hard, I mean, it, it's hard enough to like kind of be going through all of it and then also trying to like share when we don't even have the right information to share. So um, we're at a place now where I can kind of share what's going on and it's way more than I can put in a post. So I'm just gonna talk about it here. So James, if you don't know James, James is our kitten that we got who has, um, he was born without back legs. And when we took on James, I was kind of picturing that his case would be similar to uh, paralyzed kittens that we've had. Um, we've had a number of paralyzed kittens in the past and they do really well. Mm -hmm. They like, um, they get around, they, you know, kind of pull themselves on their front limbs. Uh, they can have a happy life. We've got kittens that we've adopted into homes who have great lives. And so I was thinking, oh, you know, he has no back legs. No problem. You know, he's, it's, it's just like Chloe. Everyone loves Chloe. It's just like Chloe, but without the legs getting in the way. That's what I thought. Um, as soon as James got here, it was really clear that it was clear to me that not having legs was like the least of his problems. Mm -hmm. Um, because everything about how this kitten is built is wrong. It, it's like he's someone made him out of Legos without reading the instructions or something. Like everything's wrong. Um, I feel a lot of kitten bodies. His body is not right. And um, it's not just his missing limbs. So um, some of the things that I observed about him right away were, you know, his abdomen is like so huge, really, really distended. His chest is so flat. It's like, I don't even know how to it's describe like a box. it's like a well it's like a panini or something it's yeah. like there's like no space for his diaphragm um and it has almost like an angular thing to it so it's like very flat and then an angle and then it's very very thin um so he has like very 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 decreased mobility and it's not because of his legs um that's the thing is you know you would look at a kitten with no back legs and go well he can't walk because he has no back legs but that's not true kittens and cats without back legs can have mobility he doesn't have mobility because of internal issues and this is the thing about congenital cases is like one congenital issue usually is a signifier that there's multiple other things that maybe you don't know about and with him it was like very clear right away this is this is there's a lot going on with him so we were not going to be able to get a specialty appointment for him until like mid-july and i was really worried about it because i was like this is not good he's he's not in good shape and we need to get so we had told the vet, the specialty hospital here, that we'll take that appointment in mid-July, um, but that the first cancellation that we can get, please just call us and we'll get them in. So they had a cancellation a few days ago and we were really excited and we were like, okay, we gotta get them in. So we brought them to the specialty hospital. And, um, you know, I relayed my concerns to him. One of the other things we observed, um, if you saw the really cute video of him, um, playing with, Andrew was playing with him with the video game. Uh, one of the, I mean, that was such a cute moment and, and it was really one of the only times I've seen him like experience playing mm -hmm. uh, because he didn't have to move a lot. But after that, like, do you remember his chest? Like he was so he was exhausted. So he was yeah. so winded just from batting with his front limbs. So he has very, 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 very limited lung capacity. And if you think about, you know, what it takes to have physical, physical activity, you have to have some lung capacity, you have to be able to breathe. Um, so I just was like, okay, is this, this is, you know, yes, he, we got to figure out what's going on with his little nubs on his, where his back legs should be. But 
We also need to figure out why is he so distended. We also need to figure out what's going on with his chest. Uh, why can't he breathe? All of these things. So he goes to the vet. He gets radiographs. And um, it looks terrible. He's full of poop. Like his entire colon is stretched and backed up. And this is a misleading thing about um, like severe obstipation, which is like severe constipation where like they're completely um, unable to poop. In obstipated kittens, they can seem to have diarrhea, which he did. Mm -hmm. He was, he had some stool that was coming out that was more moist. But what it was is that that comes around and hopefully you don't, I mean, if you're watching this, you don't care if I'm talking about poop. I'm going to talk a lot about poop right now. Um, so he had like, like all through his colon, really, really, really hard stool, which then the body is trying to compensate. And it's like, like putting all of this like fluid into the colon, trying to get that out. And what's happening is sort of like diarrhea is coming out around the hard plug, but the plug is not coming out. And so he's like totally backed up and that really hard body that he has, his abdomen is like filled to the brim with stool. And we have no idea how long this has been going on. It could be his entire life. It could be a couple weeks. We've only had him since Friday. Um, and, and he's been at the hospital half of that time now. So, um, it, it's hard to know why we don't, we still don't know why his abdomen is like that. There's some different theories. Like one is that he could have like congenital megacolon where he just like has an enlarged colon and he has like motility issues. It could be some event that happened where he got this blockage. It could be um, that he can't posture because he can't like get himself in a pooping position because he doesn't have hind limbs. We don't know. All we know is that he was like very severely backed up. Now, another complication of being backed up when you're him is that that hard, huge abdomen is then pushing on the diaphragm. So like think about his chest is already so flat, his lung capacity is already so limited. And then in addition to that, his whole abdomen is compressing his ability to breathe. So he has like, he can't breathe. So he was there to see the uh, orthopedist for his back limbs. But then as soon as they got the x-rays and they called me and we discussed it, I was like, I don't want to pick him up. I don't want to take him home. I want him to get transferred to um, the internal medicine department so that we can figure out what's all this gut stuff like what's going on in there so he got transferred to internal med um and that was tuesday tuesday yeah um so he got transferred to internal med and they're like wow this is really bad um they wanted to take more x-rays to see his lungs and his heart and to really like understand what was going on with his colon so we got more imaging and that was when it went from concern about his lung capacity and his gut to also concern about his heart. He appeared to have an enlarged heart, which an enlarged heart can be a sign of a septal defect, which is where the heart is basically going into heart failure, um, can lead to heart failure. Uh, and, um, they were concerned that the enlargement of his heart was due to a defect. And if you have that defect, it makes it incredibly dangerous to do anything with them. Um, another sign of going into heart failure is that um, decreased ability to breathe. And so the thinking was he might be in heart failure right now. And maybe this is not, this is suddenly really looking bad. So we went from like dropping him off for what we thought was going to be just a orthopedic exploration of his issues to um, thinking maybe he's dying right now. Um, and then the big thing is we have to get, we have to 
I mean, the, the immediate thing is we have to figure out how to get this stool out of him. So all of these issues, they're like, okay, well, you know, let's at least try to do some enemas on him. So they tried to do some enemas on him. They couldn't get anything out. They tried over and over to do enemas on him. They couldn't get anything out. He's on multiple different um, like gut motility and laxative drugs and nothing's moving. Um, and then, yeah, flash forward to yesterday was like a terrible day um, where basically we had to start considering that either we were looking at like allowing him to suffer or making a euthanasia decision. And I will be the first to say like, we, we, I believe in euthanasia as a gift mm -hmm. to a truly suffering, imminently dying animal. But we, as an organization, as people, as advocates, as people who try really hard for every single case, we don't euthanize animals unless they're literally like dying. And, and you've been there mm -hmm. when I've made euthanasia decisions and it's usually an animal where you, it's so clear they need to be euthanized that you're like, it can't happen fast enough because you're watching someone suffer. And with James, it's very difficult because James is not that. He's purring, he's sweet, he's eating, he's, you know, he's a good boy. He just has all of these, um, I'm looking at, I just noticed the comments and it's just awful when you end up like with a lot of followers okay, okay, because okay, people okay. are just, saying, no, 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 just keep going. You're okay. I'm just going to keep, I'm yeah. just not looking. I'm not going like, to look at like the five, comments. Five, five videos. Because there's like. It's Why are you here watching a video about like obstipated? This person's gotta go. You're yeah, out of yeah, here. Yeah. You're out of here. Fine. Bye. Yeah. Um, like of all the act, of all the hobbies, of all the hobbies, There's let's go watch a live now. about yeah. an obstipated kitten with no back limbs and troll it. <laughs> cool life. Cool <laughs> life. Holy cow! I mean. If I had that kind of free time, I can't even imagine. I know, Nikki, I'm not looking. I'm not looking anymore. Oh, I'm officially going. not looking. Okay, gonna keep going here. Where was I? <laughs> I don't even know, I'm so distracted now. God, y'all are just, most of you are lovely. Um, so... So Jane. James is purring. He's happy. Yeah. He's in so good he's spirits. a he's it's a very different case. He's a he's like in good spirits. So that's the thing is it's not like a case where we would be like oh like he should be euthanized. However, if he's in heart failure, you're like making the decision. Do you let them die? Like if he's in heart failure and can't poop and it's not safe to deobstipate him because anesthesia is a risk, then it's like. What, it, what, what can we really do here? And so we had a lot of conversations. I mean, I literally, I think, was it Tuesday or yesterday where I was on the phone for 12 hours? I think Tuesday. It was like... You've been on the phone a lot. I've been like basically on the phone nonstop talking to everyone from like UC Davis researchers to um, like specialists in like internal med to specialists in orthopedic surgery to nutritionists um royal canaan has been like absolutely amazing through this and like coaching me through uh different like special diets that we can put him on uh to try to get some of that stuff moving but it's like it it went from it went from ordering all this stuff i mean we, we had all these wish list things that people generously gave us um, you know, mats for him to get around on and uh, Preston made him this little cart and like all this stuff that started arriving in the mail, which was just making my heart like die inside because it's all arriving and I'm going, are we even going to get to use any of this? Mm -hmm. Like we ordered him a giant peach so he could be James in the giant peach so he could like have a little peach bed to sleep in and like this stuff is all showing up and I'm like, oh my God, he's not even going to come home. Like it was... Yesterday was terrible. Today was terrible. I woke up this morning like just, I didn't want to wake up this morning. It was just, I knew it was going to be a horrible day. And so, so 
he continued getting enemas. They didn't get it. It was, it was not productive. Um, and the thing was that the cardiologist would not be in until today. So we needed to keep him alive long enough for him to see a cardiologist because I'm not comfortable proceeding with like euthanizing an animal when we don't really know. Like we don't know. All we knew was what was on the radiograph. So he saw the cardiologist today and we were fully expecting, everybody was fully expecting to see that he was in heart failure, that he would have like this serious defect and if that was the case, then we had all like, we had all accepted that he was going to be euthanized. And it was, I cried about it like so much. I like had my little panic attack moment today. Like it was a bad, it was very hard. And so I had like accepted that he was not, like his body was just like not compatible with life. And it's hard. And then around what time like five o'clock or something this afternoon i got the call and i was fully expecting them to be like we are recommending euthanasia and it and it there wouldn't have been it, it just was so they called and um amazingly he doesn't have a heart defect and simultaneously I find out from UC Davis, and I can't talk about it a bunch because it's not published yet, but UC Davis is about to publish a thing about like heart sizes in kittens and that pediatric patients apparently, and this is like amazing and I didn't know this, but like this is the problem with, we don't, there's not enough research about kittens. So nobody knows what's normal in kittens. So things that people think are abnormal in kittens might actually be normal and his heart size, they flagged as being enlarged, but actually this new study is showing that um, kittens have a larger heart to body ratio than adults. And so we were able to like literally use this like science that doesn't, isn't even published yet to like show that actually he's, he doesn't have a heart defect, which isn't saying there's not a million other things wrong with him, but like suddenly that changed what we might be able to do for him. So it still deobstipation. Deobstipation is where you like, um, you anesthetize an animal and you um, go in like, and they manually break down the stool, literally like, I don't know how to like say this stuff without grossing everybody out. It's fine. Most Whatever. of the people here understand. Y'all can get yeah. over it. So like basically the colon is like coiling through the body. It's full of poop. So they like, mm, like manually like express it from the outside and also like go inside the body and break it down and use different things to try to break it down. But it's very, very risky, especially in a case like him where like there's stuff wrong with him that we don't even know about. He still has limited lung capacity, both because of the big belly and because of the small chest and because of the large heart. He just doesn't have a lot of space to breathe. And so all these things make it dangerous. So they, the hospital brought on like an anesthesiologist to be in the room and we had to like sign stuff to say that like we understood it was like extremely risky and he probably was going to die during it. And um, my question to them was like, is it a functionally different experience to James to either be euthanized or to pass away during the obstipation surgery? Like, is it a different experience? Because if not, then I want to take the risk of deobstipation. And so they said, it's not, it's not. Like, if he dies during deobstipation, it will feel just like he, you know, um, went to sleep. And so I was, like, fully prepared that he, it was, like, amazing that he didn't have the heart defect, but I was, like, I mean, he's probably going to pass away during this, and I had made my peace with it, and I had even told the doctor, like, listen, like, if he passes, like, we're, we're okay. Like, I know that this is hard. And, um, she called me at six o'clock and said, okay, he's like going in now. And then she called me like an hour ago and he survived, which is like, what? Like, <laughs> what? I was like fully preparing myself for having to, and I want to say like, this doesn't mean he's going to live. 
he is really, really messed up. Still could have something happen. We still don't know what's going to happen with his breathing. We still don't know what's going to happen with his gut. We don't know. But right now he's alive. And uh, I'm like, I'm just blown away. I'm like blown away. And the, the sad thing is they were not able to get all of the stool out. So they were only able to get like 20 to 30% of it out. But they were able to change the texture of it and like manipulate it in a way that they're hoping an enema might be, might be effective now. Um, we just don't know. But um, that's where we are now. And if, so he's still at the hospital. He's on a bunch of medications. He's doing really well. Um, Sonia, I didn't tell you this. Sonia, um, our program manager, her neighbor is an orthopedist at that hospital. And she ran into her when she was walking her dog mm. tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, I just left the hospital and I saw him and he was doing great. And she said that everyone there loves him and they all hang out with him and oh. like take turns cuddling him. And That's great. It's like, it's, it's just, it's been like such a roller coaster. It's been like an incredible roller coaster because like taking him in, my whole aim was just to show people that, you know, mobility challenged kittens totally can thrive. And at this point, I'm not even looking at him as a mobility challenged kitten. I'm looking at him as a kitten who has a lot of internal congenital issues, which are going to be like a real uphill battle to solve if we can even get him past this hospitalization stage. But like, it's so, so like unbelievably gratifying to be able to use the expertise of so many different people who care about him. And by the way, none of this, literally none of this could happen without the donations that we receive through Orphan Kitten Club because hospitals look at us and go like, well, you're a rescue, so, you know, we would recommend euthanasia all the time for things because they think we don't have, like, the ability, the budget to be able to handle things. And we're so, like, so fortunate and so grateful that people donate to us and believe in what we believe in, which is trying to give these really difficult cases a chance and not just trying to give them a chance for them, but for the knowledge that you gain when you give the difficult ones a chance because things we learn from this, regardless of the outcome, will impact kittens in the future, 100%. Will impact how we understand kittens in the future, will hopefully impact what I'm able to share with other people who can learn something from it. Um, a thing I've been reflecting on for the last couple days is how many times in the past, five years ago, six years ago, 10 years ago, how many times I've had a difficult kitten who passes away, who I don't know why, I don't know why they pass away. And the thing I'm told is always, well, a lot of kittens have underlying congenital defects that we just don't know about. And the thing that is cool about this is regardless of what happens, we do know about it. Like we are learning and we are gathering knowledge and we are like utilizing the expertise of the contacts that we're making and we are like <coughs> doing things that feel, it feels different. Like it feels really different than just being like, I don't know, you know, we just don't know. Um, because I, I'm not like accepting not knowing. Now, we don't want to treat him like a science experiment. If any of this becomes too much for him, if any of this becomes like, like we're not going to poke and prod him if he's in misery. However, he's not in misery. He's like in good spirits and he doesn't know what's going on. And uh, we can learn so much. From, I mean, we can learn so much from this. Even the fact that we were able to like connect a new research study to a hospital that now has that information so that they're not you know, potentially euthanizing animals thinking they're in heart failure when they're not. They're just babies and people don't know about babies. Like, this is why, this is why I'm obsessed with kittens. <laughs> because there's like so much to learn. Like, there's so much to learn. This knowledge doesn't exist. And like, 
places like UC Davis, places like, I mean, honestly, like Orphan Kitten Club, like the things that we're trying to do are things that have not, not been done. And I'm very grateful to people who donate to us so that we can explore these things so that James can have a chance and maybe someday he's gonna get to use that cart and use that little peach bed and use all those mats that you guys bought for him. Like, that's what I want for him. And I don't, I still don't know like what is gonna happen. It's very hard to go through these cases publicly because people want answers and like, I don't have answers. I mean like experts don't have answers. Nobody's like, we we're, we have the knowledge that we have, but we're all kind of like learning and exploring this as we go. So um, I really appreciate those of you who are like awesome in the comments genuinely um 99 percent of you are <laughs> awesome in the comments and i like feel like it's a community and i feel like we're doing an incredible thing together and i feel like grateful especially because i feel super isolated just personally like i don't get to see my friends anymore we're like doing the stay at home thing so like i feel like this online community is like you guys have my back and are back and Orphan Kitten Club's back and you have James's back and that's awesome. There are sometimes comments that like make me just, it like derails my entire day and I'm like, ah, nobody understands. So um, that's why I wanted to do a live video so that I can like at least have those of you who are watching it like understand and feel like you're, I mean, we're like sitting in our bed right now. Like hopefully you can like not feel like you're sitting in our bed with us. Maybe that's weird, but like feel like you're you're our friend. You are telling you all the stuff that we know. If you see people who have questions in the comments, um, I'm like too exhausted to answer stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna post this video so that people can watch it. Um, but uh, I see those of you who answer questions for people and I really appreciate that. I appreciate it, especially when you're like really polite. I mean, people have questions that they just don't know. Um, and sometimes people come across a little bit harsh in the comments, but the truth is everyone's going through it right now. Like this is not an easy time for anyone. So if we can communicate in a way that is like respectful of people who are asking questions, people who are, you know, respectful of us, honestly, like, it's just so appreciated because this is hard for us. It's hard for, I know it's hard for people who like love our babies and, and watch along. So, um, I think that's everything I have to say. Mm -hmm. Should I get Bobby? Oh yeah, get Bobby. And then, um, I will answer some questions. There's 44 questions. I've never done the questions thing, but let me try to do it. Everybody's putting peaches in the peach emojis in the comments. Y'all are sweet. That's gonna be his new emoji. Okay, let's answer some questions. First question, have you slept at all? <laughs> um, yeah, Andrew's been doing the morning feedings. Sometimes. Sometimes, the sometimes the night feedings. Um, the other thing is I have Lucy right now. So Lucy's really hard. However, she makes, James makes Lucy look easy right now. <laughs> So, um, yeah, uh, I'm sleeping in two to three hour intervals at night and you know, like I, I fully believe in self care. I fully believe in taking you time. I also fully believe in like knowing when it's time to push yourself. And right now is time to push myself right now is not the time to be like, well, I need a nap. So, you know, like it's okay. I'll sleep. I'll sleep. What? Go, because you just, Andrew said shots fired because he just took a nap. Listen, it's okay. Andrew's like a great, supportive, loving, wonderful partner who, um, he's been like doing the laundry, making the food, like helping. He offered, you offered to give me a back rub, foot massage. So... Uh, I don't, we don't know where Bobby is. We're going to show Bobby in a second if we can find him. Get the crinkle ball. He loves the crinkle ball. I think he might be hidden. He's hiding? I don't know. Um, all right. Let's see what other questions I can answer. All right. People are asking, like, questions that have nothing to do with this. I'm not going to answer those. Um, 
<laughs> What's your favorite fruit? These are not the types of questions that I'm going to be answering. Um, wow, there's so many weird personal questions here. Let's do, we're doing James related questions right now. Okay. Will James need a special diet so he can poop easier? So, uh, I want to speak, I want to like temper expectations about James. We still don't know what's going to happen with him. But if James is discharged, if, if James is able to like, evacuate his bowels and come home, then yes, we have, um, I'm like so fortunate to be working with Royal Canaan because their diets are incredible and their veterinary diets are awesome. And they just came out. I think they just came out. I, I was not aware of it. They just came out with, um, a, uh, a veterinary GI kitten diet. And so that is what he, uh, will eat um, when he comes home, uh, if he comes home, is the Royal Canaan GI kitten diet. Um, and it's just, it's made to um, be really digestible for them, to be something that can really move through um, a, a digestive tract that is as complicated as his. So yes, he will be on a special diet. I know, game changer for sure. I had, I didn't know that they made that until this week. Um, I mean, I have to say, Royal Canaan, they have a nutritionist named Bree who I've become uh, like colleagues, friends with. She's awesome and she knows so much about like the ways that nutrition impacts health. And so she has been working with me, not just on James, but also on Lucy's case on finding like the nutrition to support their, um, their very, very specific medical needs. So um, I found she- Bobby. You found Bobby. Who is it? It's Bobby. This is James's brother, and we've just had him out in the uh, in, in our the bedroom. Bedroom, because you know what? We love Bobby. Bobby Riggs. We love Bobby Riggs. Okay. Um. Yes. So, yay, Royal Canaan. Thank you. Um. Okay. Let's see what else. Is it common for a kitten to be born without hind legs? Um. I don't know. I've never had one. I'm aware of a couple of them online. Um, and I, and I talked to one person who has a cat and I wish I could remember the name, but if you know it, put it in the comments. I think his name is Anakin and I don't know, I don't remember his IG handle, but he has two legs. Same, same situation as, um, James, except that, you know, there are different, like other complications that, you know, every, every cat's an individual, so they're all gonna have their individual problems. I've been talking with that person who has Anakin, and she's been kind of telling me about the common problems that they have, but of course we're having to treat uh, James as an individual case. Okay, what else? Why couldn't they get all the poop out tonight? Good question. Um, because it's very, very hard and it's very, very backed up. And, um, when the anesthesiologist was doing the, um, when, when the anesthesiologist was there kind of like overseeing the anesthesia part of the operation, they monitor all of their vitals during that, just like you would with any surgery. Um, and he was doing really great, except his body temperature started to drop and the anesthesiologist recommended um, discontinuing and, mm. and um, did I tell you that? Mm -mm. Oh, so his body temperature started to drop and if his temperature had continued dropping or had stayed cold like that, he would have been at risk of dying from the anesthesia, for just like dying in the procedure. So they stopped and I think that was the right thing for them to do. It just means they weren't able to complete the procedure, but they got, you know, they got some of it out. 30% of that bulge is a lot. So. <laughs> well, I'm just hoping the rest of it will start to come yeah, out. Yeah, flow. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's see. I'll let you answer this one. How did you come up with James's name? James, his name comes from the show Twin Peaks. So we have a litter of seven currently. They're all Twin Peaks names. And we got two boys. 
So they're not, they're kind of at odds in the show, but Bobby Briggs here. <clears throat> Bobby Briggs and James Hurley. So James is named after a motorcycle ride in bad boy. And we kind of wanted to do that because if he ends up using his little scooter, then it'll be like, he's kind of like a motorcycle guy. Exactly. Um, they both love Laura. <laughs> Laura but hasn't also, met them yet. Yeah. So also, um, we like to give human names oh, right, yeah. to kittens who have like severe complications. I feel like it helps people build empathy. Um, it's something that you'll notice that we do with really, really complicated cases. A lot of the time I'll give them like a beautiful name that you would name a child. Um, and the reason... Or the pigs. Or the pigs. We also <laughs> name all pigs after humans because these are animals that we want people to truly empathize with. And, mm -hmm. and like, you know, when we get a pig and people are like, name him pork chop. First of all, so rude. Second of all, if we get a pig and we name him... Joshua, you guys know people named Joshua. People might be like, oh, my nephew's name is Joshua. Then it builds empathy. That's my, that's my like theory. That's why I do that. So we did not want to give him some silly name. We wanted to give him a beautiful name that people would empathize with. So that's why we came up with those names. All right, let's see. Does Bobby have congenital issues? Not that we're aware of. He seems to be doing just great. Uh, huh, huh, huh. What will happen to James <clears throat> once he's back from the hospital? Who will take care of him? Uh, we will take care of him. And honestly, everything with him is like one day at a time. We don't know. I really want to like emphasize that we don't know what's going to happen with him. Um, I was fully, fully, fully prepared and had accepted that he was likely to die today and I thought that was like the horrible post I was gonna have to make tonight and I was dreading it all of it it was like so upsetting and uh so now it's like it almost feels like this is like bonus life like exactly you know what I mean it's like bonus like even the fact that he's just gonna live another day is like a bonus day so we'll take it one day at a time we'll figure it out but yes, he's, he's part of Orphan Kitten Club, our rescue, so um, we will have him. Okay, this is interesting. Is there a way to enhance James's breathing abilities? Good question. So um, the hope, one hope, is that as his gut gets under control, if it gets under control, that when your gut is not so swollen that it will, you know, that'll come down, it'll become soft, it will hopefully create a little more space for his diaphragm, um, which may give him a little bit more lung capacity. The idea is this, this is to explain like the best case scenario. The best case scenario is his guts get under control. That gives him a little bit more lung capacity. The little bit more lung capacity gives him a little bit more ability to have like exercise tolerance. Mm -hmm. The exercise tolerance gives him the opportunity to build muscle. The muscle gives him the ability to um, like uh, become more mobile and carry himself around. and carry himself around. That's the dream, but that's a a lot of steps and everything has to go right. And until like an hour ago, I thought none of these things were going right. So I'm trying to hold my breath, but like move forward because bonus day, you know, that's a, it's all a bonus. So um, in terms of his chest shape, his chest shape is like that, the orthopedist thinks, because he's always prone. He's always laying flat because he doesn't have hind limbs. So his chest has developed very flat. Um, if he can increase his mobility, it's not that his chest is going to like beautifully round out, but it may not get worse. And as he grows, um, if he's upright more, then it may increase his um, breathing capacity. But it might, that might continue to be a problem. We don't know. Um, okay. 
Um, okay, this is a good question. Does not having back legs have anything to do with constipation? Possibly. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's a couple things to that. One is cat, cats who have congenital bone issues, like Manx cats who don't have a tail, you know, a lot of the time they also have internal issues. Um, so we don't know, like we just don't know enough about, like when I say we, I mean like the royal we. We don't know enough about congenital limb malformations in kittens to know if that's why he has these issues or if it's something else. Um, but it's possible, it's certainly possible. Um, okay. <laughs> We're not gonna answer some of these silly ones, but that one's funny. It says, do you sometimes annoy your cat? I don't know, what do you she think? She sure does. <laughs> okay. Um, Have the vets seen a case like James before? I would say James is, he's a true unicorn. Mm. He's a unicorn. Uh, the cool thing is people are rallying around him because he's a unicorn. And anybody who has like any ounce of scientific curiosity is going to see James and go, wow, that's really interesting. Let's try to figure out what's going on there. So it's a very unique case. Um... I'm going to just go ahead and answer like a few yeah. more and then we'll hop off because I got to feed little Lucy. Well, James, um, maybe he needs to be stimulated to go potty like Chloe. That is not um, what we're thinking with him. Uh, he's able to pee totally on his own and he is able to get poop out of him. It's just he's got the hard stool that he can't push through. Um, so we're not thinking that at this time. Um, I think that we're getting to a closing point here. Um, is your gut feeling like, do you, so I think it's like, what's your gut feeling about James's chances? Um, well, when we first got him a week ago, my gut feeling was, this kitten's going to be fine. Well, before we got him. Before we got him, I was like, he's going to be fine. And then he got here and I thought, this might be weird. And then it had, my, my feelings of his survival have like plummeted to zero in the last three, four days. And now, I don't know. I'm amazed that he's alive right now. Like, I mean, you went, you took a nap and woke up probably expecting him to not be alive. Mm -hmm. And Sonia and I, I mean, she knew I was going to be calling her to give her an update and she like fully expected me to be giving her an update that he had passed. And when I called her and I said, so she went, oh my gosh, your voice. Cause I wasn't <laughs> crying. So, um, you know, like every, every minute is a, we're, we're, it's hard. Part of me wants to not share any of this until I have all the answers. But the truth is like, I can't keep not posting about James. You guys need to know what's going on. So, um, I don't really know what my gut is telling me now. It's, um, my gut is just telling me I'm very grateful that he's here tonight. Um, let's do just one last one. Let's find a good one. Help me find a good one. I'm looking. <laughs> Haroon, you're so loud. Come here, buddy. Come here. James and the giant poop. I love it. I That's so. what we want. Yeah. That's the story that I want to see. Um, okay, this is a good one. What did the x-rays show about his legs? So, the um, x-rays showed they're really really interesting and I wanted to share them but then I was like I can't just like I can't start going down this path yeah. because it's it's if I post his x-rays anybody who knows anything about reading a radiograph is going to look at it and go what about all those other things and then it's like this whole 
thing that I've been going through all week. So I just, I didn't feel like I could share everything yet, but I'll share them. They're fascinating. He has bones in, so James's body is <laughs> this little flat chest, this bulbous torso, and then he does not have hind limbs, but he has these little, I call them his flaps. They're like little tissue that is where his legs would have developed. And they're like, you know, an inch or less long. And I couldn't tell if there was bone in there. One concern I had for him and a question I had for the orthopedist was, you know, if he has bone in there, is the bone broken? Because I thought maybe the reason that he wasn't mobile was that as he was dragging himself, perhaps he was like in pain. Like maybe he had, maybe those little limb flaps were like broken and painful. But, um, so they looked at them and, and they do, they do have bones in there. He's missing a lot of the bones that should be in there, most of them, but he has some little tiny bones in there. Um, one of his little limb things has one claw, which is so cute. <laughs> It's so tender. It's like his little body was like, I got one claw. Mm -hmm. He's like a little one claw wonder with his one claw. So, um, yeah, he, uh, he does not have any broken bones there. So he doesn't seem to have any pain in them. If everything else goes okay, then one day he would probably have to have those little things removed. But that's not the issue for him. It really isn't. The big issue is just everything else <laughs> inside of him. And maybe things that are yet to be discovered. Because sure. honestly, yeah. he's a unicorn. KJ said he's on the Hot Mess Express, which I really liked. Yeah. He is on the Hot Mess Express. But you know what? The Hot Mess Express is still going, baby. It's still going. So we're grateful for that. So I guess I'll just um, end this by saying, here's, here's his brother, Bobby. Bobby's going to take us out. Bobby, take us out. Hi, everyone. I'm Bobby. I'm cute. He's like, I don't want to put me down. I got to attack the crinkle ball. Um, what I will end on is that... Um, Honestly, we, we would not be able to do this without donations. So um, I'm going to put a link in my bio right now for our donation page. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Um, it's orphankittenclub.org slash donate. And um, you don't have to donate, but if you can donate, if you're like inspired by this work, if you want to give towards James, I mean, I don't even know what all this is going to cost. It's like... He went in for a specialty consult and then he never left. So yeah. it's, it's, it's going to be significant, but um, we think it's worth it. If you'd like to give, you can do that at orphankittenclub.org slash donate. Other kind things that you can do, just be sweet in the comments, um, answer people's questions so that I don't have to. Um, our wish list is empty. I know people are asking about the wish list, but... Um, we got everything that he needs, which is so kind. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's it. Mm -hmm. There's really be patient. Know that we're not going to know everything, but I will update as I can. So that is, that's that. Anything else? I don't think so. You did okay. a great job. Oh, good. I was like, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to even relay all of this. And I'm sure that I missed some stuff, but um, I'm going to go feed Lucy who is doing great. And um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Okie dokie. Love you guys. Yeah, love we genuinely love this community and I see a lot of people who are important to us in here. So thank you for watching and hopefully, hopefully good news good to news come. Tomorrow. One step know. at a time. One step at a time. Okay guys, night night. night.